All right. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I had mentioned the last time I streamed, um, about, uh, the, well, like some paintings that I used to do for my friends when I was like back in school, like eighth grade through high school, that kind of a thing. And like, you know, your friends are like, can you make me something for my room kind of a thing. And so someone said, you know, you mentioned that, could you do one of those paintings? And so I just, you know, I looked at my room and I realized I don't have one for my room. So I went ahead and pulled colors that are from my personal uh, space. And uh, yeah, so that I'm going to create one of those paintings. Super easy. I'm using um, satin, like Craftsmart, and also satin multi-purpose folk art paint, craft paint. You know, you can get it anywhere. Um, it's about like a dollar ninety-nine ish per color. Um, something in my eye. That's awesome. Um. I'm also using, I'm not using, um, paint cups. I'm using my palette because you need to be able to do a lot of mashing and palette work. Let me just grab a tissue. <sighs> okay. So I have three colors that I'm working with. Three main colors. And what I've done is I've just taken a Dick Blick pre-stretched canvas. It's about a half inch, maybe three eighths of an inch uh, deep. I just took a pencil and marked off three sections. So they're not equal, but it's like very branchy like. Um, <clears throat> if you can see the, yeah, you can see it. Um, so just did that. It's pre-gessoed. So it's already pre-primed and ready to go for acrylic paint. It's uh it's been um pre-primed for acrylic for acrylics. So that's kind of important. Is <laughs> if you put um if you use a primer that is for oil paint and you put like a excuse me allergies be kicked in my butt. Uh, if you put uh, like a, a latex or acrylic over it, it can cause it to peel. So you definitely want to make sure that you're using a primer that is for the paint that you're planning on putting on top. And that kind of goes along with house paint too. You know, if you're going to be using oil-based house paints in your house, you have to use an oil-based primer. Otherwise you get like, you got issues. <laughs> so, um, post issues. Uh, so I'm using two brushes. Um, I'm using, they're both Royals. Um, I'm, I'm kind of a, a Royal girl, <laughs> I guess. Um, Mostly because I do have uh, an issue with my right hand and it's very difficult for me to grip things and hold on to things if I'm not like fully concentrating on what I'm doing just for the holding process. So it's hard for me to uh, hold on to things when I'm doing like, you know, when I can't focus on that one thing. I've broken many cups, <laughs> many mugs, my favorite mugs. I've dropped, you know, here and there, and I've really had to rely on my left hand a lot. Uh, so I've kind of become ambidextrous in the process. But I'm using a three quarter inch Royal Soft Grip SG700. It's a flat brush. It's seen, it's seen better days. It's been through, you know, been through it with me so it's it's more of an oval at this point <laughs> like if you can see that than a flat but we're going to be using it to do a lot of this kind of stuff so it's fine 
<clears throat> then I'm also using a half inch. Now I have a one inch and I have a half inch, but I kind of wish I had a three quarter inch in this uh, type of thing. But this is a half inch Royal Soft Grip SG1400 brush. And it's a super soft, like super soft. You, don't, you can't even hear it. It's like, um, this makes a really good makeup brush, FYI. I've got these for makeup, but that is. <clears throat> so you kind of want to stay, like this is a 12 by 12 canvas. Um, unless you're doing something that's like over the couch, like artwork over the couch or bigger, you kind of want to stay with one inch somewhere in the realm of one inch brushes for projects. So, all right, so I'm going to start with one of the colors. So each one, I have a dark, a medium, and a light shade. Not necessarily all the same color though. It's kind of funny. Um, I think purple is the only one that's all in the same color family. So I've got um, eggplant, an eggplant purple. I've got a lavender and a lilac blossom, which is like, it's kind of, so that's the, the gist. Uh, get up and get, let me pop a spotlight on here, see if I can, mm, that seems to be making it even more darker. <laughs> Let me see if I can move my spotlight over here. There, look at that. I can see stuff. All right, so dark to light. I'm going to go ahead and mix these up. I'm going to um, squeeze a bit on my... I'm going to kind of keep it in court, uh, quadrants as well. Shake that up. Uh, you can get ball bearings and put them inside your uh, containers to help you with the shake-a-shake-a process too. Okay. Ew, <laughs> that's the paint. Um, and I'm kind of going to keep it in quadrants so I have my paint in that quadrant. And so, um, so what I'm going to do is uh, staying in the section, kind of leaving about an eighth of an inch from my pencil line. I'm going to move into, I'm going to work on this section. And I'm also going to go over the edge. I'm going to, it's not just going to be this uh, section here. I'm also going to go over the edge here and here. <clears throat> so we're moving dark to light. And while it's still wet, you want to go into your other colors. Oh, also make sure you got water and some kind of towel or something set aside. It's super fast. It's like this is gonna be the super fast tutorial because it's uh you now we go go through it pretty quickly. Um <clears throat> but like so you can see you can start to see the canvas through there, so I wanna go back in with my dark. But I'm just using the same brush. So it's like it's loading all sorts of all sorts of uh, of the colors. And I'm moving from dark to medium to light. So you can see the dark here, you can see the medium there, you can see the light through. Ew. 
but uh, you can see here where like I can see the canvas through there. So I want to go back into the dark color. Drop that back down. Go to my light color. And it's still dropping. You can see it's still dropping dark colors. That's fine. That's perfectly acceptable behavior. If you find that your round brush is too soft, switch over to the other one. <clears throat> um, I do want to put the medium in there, so I'm just leaving a little spot. Because I didn't get a lot of medium, medium here on. Sometimes this brush can kind of soak up the paint a little. So that's kind of why I put so much on my palette, because a lot of it ends up in the crazy loaded brush. <clears throat> okay, so I do want to just kind of go over it, find some spots that I want to drop, um, make sure that my darker color is, you know, not too muddled and that canvas isn't showing like in some spots that I'm seeing. And you want to keep it like you if you find that your paint is drying out too much you know you can get a spray bottle of water and make sure that you're still working that your paint is still pretty wet while you're modeling all these colors together okay Okay, I'm just going to do the edges and I'm going to follow the where the color ended on the edge to bring it over the edge. So I had dark here. Light. Medium one here, medium here. Okay, dark. Here, dark this way, lighter color down here. <clears throat> so you can see I've just pulled it over the side, and I just want to make sure that it's not showing. So just tapping it to muddle it into the front. <clears throat> right, so let's just grab uh, this side, do the same thing. So I've got medium color, light color, medium color. So I don't have any dark on this, um, this bottom area. Just want to tap, get extra off my brush. All right, 
right. So you've just got this nice little feathery fay. Similar to what we did last week with the resin, or last time with the resin, but paint. You kind of do it opposite. You build up. Whereas the other way we build back, we build from the top bottom when it's resin and from the bottom up when it's paint. But um, I do have extra left on my palette. So I'm going to go ahead and scoop it. Just going to grab a nice stiff brush and scoop anything that's left on my palette back into the container. Um, I used most of the dark. Just clean, off, clean off my brush um, sticking them in the dark. Um, I tend to just open the containers and uh, either work out of the cap if I'm like doing just like painting miniatures or whatever. Um, but if I'm doing this, I will like scooch, you know, like uh, just go ahead and scooch right into my. I rarely use the spout, like the squeeze spout. <sighs> I don't know why I did it tonight for some of them, but I usually don't bother taking their seals off. Like you'll see, I have like see the safety steel seal still on to keep them airtight. So while that's setting up, well, what's great about acrylics is that they dry pretty quickly. Uh, so that's drying while I'm doing all this like kind of clean up, prepping for the next color phase. I have done rainbows like this. Um, I recommend doing because uh, you're modeling a lot. I mean, I have done rainbows where I, you know, the all the colors are like in the section kind of a thing, but you have to kind of do each color individually, let it set up, then go and then go back in and you model it with your touch up rather than this initial uh, phase. Okay, so I did end up moving my colors all around my palette. That's fine. I'm actually just going to grab a wet wipe. which works really great for cleaning resin. It's just a baby wipe. And, you know, just, just, a little, just a little white, baby wipe kind of thing. And clean off my resin. I mean, you can just get up and wash your palette if you want, if you so choose, but I kind of want to, didn't want to be constantly walking away from my camera because it's a live stream. It's not like, I mean, yeah, if you watch this on YouTube, you're not seeing any of the, you're not going to see any of the fighting with my camera to get the best angle kind of stuff and, you know, all that stuff. But like, it's, it's not like they give you 10 minutes to futz with your stuff. It's literally just like, oh, we're starting? Okay. <laughs> it just it just starts going. Okay. And then, you know, see, filled up. I'm gonna take my drying towel or my wiping towel. I like wipe my brush towel and it's all clean and Sparkly again, okay. All right, let's see how my brush is doing. So I just have warm soapy water. I actually use, um, I think it's Myers is the name, chocolate mint. 
<laughs> soap. It's like liquid soap. And I just add it to warm water. And I mean, it cleans the brushes and it smells fantastic. It smells like chocolate mint cookies in here. <laughs> it's great. <clears throat> yeah, nothing like a good thin mint to clean your brush. Look at that. All I did was soak it in there and it just came right out. It's great. <laughs> Okay, um, all right, so the plan I have for the pencil lines, I will explain later, but uh, I'm going to switch over to this side. So, okay, this one, I'm going to do the green. Okay, so the green is a little different. They are the, you know, it is the um, dark medium light still. Um, but I'm using uh, Viridian Green, which is like a teal. And uh, I'm using a Aqua Blue in the middle. And then I'm using a true like Fern Green, which is kind of, uh, it's like greener. It's like a sage that's like got more, a little bit more leaf color in it like leaf green color so it's kind of like a teal aqua and green combo but there is a dark a medium and a light and that is what i'm using for the next one okay gotta really the viridian's new so it's pretty separated hold on a sec <laughs> I don't know if that's like considered ASMR. <laughs> okay, the Viridian is super liquidy. So, a little bit, it's gonna go a long way. The purple ones were a little bit more like a true acrylic paint. Like they, on the palette, they looked like little caterpillars of color. So, don't know what to I mean usually I would use you know like acrylic paint in the tubes I didn't want to spend like hours and hours doing a live stream trying to explain you know like matching colors ratios and things like that because it's like you just kind of want to see how to do it and see how to do it the easiest most cost effective especially in this um economy uh but so you can just you know if you want to make this for your your daughter your best friend for her birthday this canvas was a two pack for $3.99 and um I did get it on sale but like dickblick.com often has sales and if you spend like a certain amount or more, you get free shipping and blah, 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 you know, or you get coupons if you sign up for their newsletter, things like that. So I've been getting stuff from them for years, years and years, like since I was in our school, like decades. <laughs> so, Iggy, so going to go in, um, I think where I meet here, I'm going to do the light color. So I'm going to start from this this area and work my way this way. So I'm going in. This is the Viridian Green. Uh, definitely you can see the canvas so it's definitely a much thinner paint. This is I think the yeah this is the cheaper CraftSmart tape, uh, paint. Um, I am gonna actually go around the edge here. Um, definitely, I mean, at the time I probably got a multi-pack or something when I got colors. Um, cause you can get like, CraftSmart is Walmart, I think, but I haven't shopped in Walmart on purpose since 2018. <laughs> um, so I started using Folk Art Satin, way better. Um, but if you're on a really tight budget, the craft smarts are like uh, between 50 cents and a dollar. So, I mean, it depends on, you know, what your, what your budget is. 
So obviously I'm still using it, so it's not horrid. It's not a horrid paint. I'm gonna stick with the, um, the darks and the lights for now because they're so runny that I know I can use, I can add the light on top of them and muddle them in because they're probably still going to be wet by the time they get there. So this is just the medium color. Um, I mean, I know where my lines are, but if you want to um, leave a little exposed, you know, uh, you can do that so that you can remember where your where you wanted your. Uh, this is going to get painted. That line is going to get painted. That's that's kind of why. Okay. Uh, color mode. You can see just how wet it is. I keep adding to this because I keep seeing the canvas through. But you can see like. This is the Craft Smart paint. I've done like what three applications, and I can still see canvas. Versus this is the Folk Art paint, and it's one a single application, and also it has the sealer in it. I am actually going to cover this coat, this whole thing with resin when it's finished, to really bring out the colors, um, to make them pop at the end. But um, yeah, for now, just building up the paint. Dark. So like when I was in school, it didn't happen canvas this nice. If we just had canvas board, you know, it's like flat, it's about a quarter of an inch maybe thickness. And it's literally just a piece of like bristle board or cardboard with canvas wrapped around it. Um, so that's going to be even less money and usually you can get like those in packs of 10. So this is like actually a cute, um, like I did this for our birthday at one point where I made all of my guests individual smaller canvases um, and that was just like their take home for the party that was quite a while ago before the global plague and all um, so i'm just hitting the side okay yeah so craft smart maybe not maybe not for this project because you can still see the white of the canvas coming through Super not happy with that. Um, yeah, like I feel like even if you did a primer color that was in the realm of the paint colors you're planning on using, it would still show it through. It does have cool kind of veining happening though. Okay. Um, I am just going to get some of this off because there's a lot of paint loaded into this sucker. <laughs> okay, and we're going to go into the lighter color. I need to bring the light color. Hmm, it's not really picking it up well. Okay, there we go. I just want to model it into the colors around it. <laughs> That's my wet canvas. Go around the side. Okay. 
that's fine. I'll hit that with a baby wipe in a sec. Um, Just adding here and there, everywhere, just a little bit of that fern green. <clears throat> okay, I am going to grab my one inch brush because it's stiffer. I'm going to put more of the sage green down on my Because that brush is pretty loaded with the other colors and I'm losing a lot of the pop that I want. The pop of color. So I'm going to kind of model it in and build it up. Has like an earthen, earth like thing happening. I think I might grab, because this is like really not the lightest. I thought it was going to be so much lighter. Um, so I might grab, there is a crisp green that I have. Find, okay. Crisp is kind of um, a little too fluorescent looking. I mean, the light green is pretty fluorescent looking too, but I'm going to throw some of that in there. Just add the mottled colors. So it's not, um, it's not as It's coming off as more of a medium um, color, so I'm going to model this light green into the fern. Oh yeah, just to get a nice little pop. Obvious highlights. You can't mess it up. It's literally just color. You're just literally like dropping, you're banging color onto a canvas. There's no, all the texture you're seeing, the brush is doing all that. And it's just, it's chaos. It's what it is. So. I'm just going to hit the sides, get color on the sides that is consistent with what is on the front. There's only two spots where the lighter color met. That looks nice. Look at that in the light. It's so like earthy and then trees and such. I like it. 
Show my legs. <clears throat> then my last is uh, in the pink purple family. Um, my water is crazy looking. All the all the colors. Someone asked me what my. They're like, what? What is the? Because apparently, uh, you can see my water cup or whatever, and there's like a flamingo on it. It's an empty cotton candy <laughs> container. Like we have. Uh, it's called Publix. That is our local grocery and green market. Um, there are not a lot of vegan choices where I live, but Publix has a lot of things. And they happen to have, like, I think it's like a dollar. I mean, it's been a while. It's been, you know, these are some old tubs. Um, dollar cotton candy. <laughs> it's like a tub of cotton candy for a dollar. It's like, uh, I think it's blue raspberry. Always. It's always blue raspberry. It's like pink and blue. Um, with like a bit of purple where the two colors meet. But it's like always the same colors. And it's a dollar. Definitely not on my, not on my suggested foods <laughs> list. But once in a while, you just, usually when the, like, I think it was especially like, uh, like on the road, doing on the road, doing shows and stuff. It's like, you're, you're not the healthiest either when you're on the road. <laughs> you're just not. Okay. So I'm going to put, while that sets, I'm going to put my extra paint. Um, I don't have any light color extra because I kind of modeled that pretty good on my palette. But I'm going to put the extra turquoise aqua back in. And uh, I'm going to try to get this Viridian back in, but I don't have high hopes because it's pretty, it almost reminds me of like paint pouring paint. It's pretty, it's pretty uh, liquidy. Don't have high hopes for it. I will see. Uh, I mean, it's okay. Some, uh, some back in there. So I've used all those, putting those aside. I'm using, um, this is yeah, this is also a royal. Um, it's about a quarter inch flat stiff brush to scoop the extra, scoop the extra paint off my uh, palette. You know, just and put it back in the, uh, you know, see, just scoop it back off, put it back in my container. Okay, okay, all right. I'm gonna use another baby wipe. Actually.
So, is this dry? Yes, okay. So you can see this, that little goober dried. Oh, what are you doing? Some. Mm. Ugh, I don't like the craft smart. Ooh, the hair, too. The bristle hair. Got it. Okay, so maybe not craft smart, guys. Let's go for that. Go, go for that folk art. Spend the extra ninety-nine cents per color to get the the folk art uh, craft paint. Ugh. Why? Why? I think I'm making it worse. Um, I'm just tapping it with that little half-inch brush, modeling it out, so it's not like a big pile of aqua right there. There we go. So it like looks like mimicking that. Okay. So this is another weird combo. Of a dark, a medium, and a light, and the medium is crazy. Okay, so we've got a magenta, which is a very pinky purple color. It's not like any of our colors here, though. Then we've got a crazy bright pink. It's like bubblegum. It's like classic bazooka bubblegum color or whatever. And then we've got a very piggy baby pink, very pale pink color. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking with my color scheme, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, so I'm going to shake up my paints. This is another one that I still have the seal on. So I've got, I think, let's see, are these all folk art? Mm, okay, the magenta is a craft smart. However, it is a multi-surface craft smart, so that is definitely different from the that one that we used in the other one. The other one was just a satin. This is a multi-surface, so this can you can paint on glass and things like that with it. <clears throat> so we'll see how it does. But so far, I'm not a craft smart girl tonight for this particular project. I do use them on my mini on my uh, RPG miniatures though, so All right. my medium pink color in there. Ooh, I am short. This is why we scoop it back in. <clears throat> These are only two ounce containers. All right, so I'm not going to do the same kind of a thing here that I did with that. Um, I am going to, you know, put on the dark, medium, light through because I feel like that is better than trying to cover the medium and dark with a lighter color. There was a lot of extra modeling that happened here that I was not really crazy about. All right. Okay, so I'm going to kind of move this way, like start in this corner and move this way.
Mm, yeah, not crazy about. Don't don't do the cross mark. It's not it's not stellar for this kind of project. Um, I can see the canvas a lot through it, so it's gonna take it's gonna take some coats. Anyway. Like I'm gonna have to like slop it on basically to get what I want it to do. Okay. It's not quite as runny as the red and green was. Um, it's definitely not, not doing what I would prefer it to do. So, um, as you're applying it, you're also working it back into the other color and kind of blurring that. I think I'm not on the camera. Blurring the line here. So you're, I'm adding this, the, the, uh, like bubblegum color and working it back into the dark and kind of pulling some of the dark into the bubblegum color to model that spot where they meet. And uh, do you want to drop just that one little bit of green that ended up right there? That's fine. Okay, so I'm going to go into my I kind of clean excess off, go into my light pink color. So, okay. Graphing, graffling it to go around the uh, edges. Purple though is dry. To show you how quickly, you know, you can get this, start this, get it done. But yeah, I am having to go back over the color over and over because of the. It's just not as opaque. It's not as well pigmented as the folk art, so that's really the issue. The folk art is much more opaque. The color is consistent, more consistent, and it's definitely not requiring me to coat and coat and coat and coat and coat to get the color, to get the coverage. The light and the medium are both folk art colors. You can see how you can see the white of the canvas through there, but it's just a wall of color for the other things. They're also blending a little easier into each other. <clears throat> All right. Like what I have done, uh, <laughs> is 
it's also done uh, where I didn't do big sections. I kept it like kind of like dark, medium, light. Like dark, medium, like um, I can do, let's see, like in this kind of area. Um, let me just grab some of the dark. <clears throat> Come on, dark out. Turn now you're thick. Now you're thick. Five seconds ago, nothing. No consistency. That's just weird looking. <laughs> okay. Where I'll do like a hit. And then the medium, and then the light, and one small area, so that can give it a completely different texture going in. Um, I'm not loving this. This is more consistent with the purple. I'm thinking of redoing this, um, picking more blues and greens, but redoing this section. It's already dry, and I can see through it, it's bothering me, and it's not consistent with the rest of the brush vessel. Um, that's the only thing about these softer rounds is the shedding <laughs> that occurs. Um, oh my gosh, there's another one over here. Let me just... It's that one spot that had a little bit of the green on it. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not loving the, the blue-green combo. So that I might re... Let's see. We could do... Let's see. Uh, I like the aqua. Um, we could get a maybe a navy. Here we go. So we're gonna go indigo, aqua, and light blue. I think that will be closer to similar consistency because I'm not loving it. It looks too much like earth. <laughs> like I was trying to go for earth and then pink and purple, <clears throat> which is not the, uh, not the vibe. It's not the vibe. I don't have any, um, of the pink that I can mix. I can put back into the container because I pretty much modeled it across my thing. I did, however, managed to keep it on one half of my palette, so I'm just going to uh, work with the blues on my palette without cleaning it. Hopefully it'll be fine. Okay. So I'm hoping, because there's already this, I mean, the indigo is craft smart. So there's that. Um, there's that road back. But there's already a lot of paint on here. So I'm hoping that this will just act as an additional primer. Uh, yeah. Let's just show you the consistency. This is folk art. This is folk art. This is craft smart. 
it's practically like a liquid whereas this is very consistent with like acrylic paint that comes in a tube so that's you can kind of tell that that's going to give you a texture that's going to give you an opaque uh, ness you can see in the other colors the dark color here the dark color here were craft smart and you can still kind of see a little bit of the canvas poking through so not excited about that um oh yeah look at that let's get some blue on there okay it's not completely dry but it's as dry as it's gonna get <laughs> for this live stream But you can kind of tell it's pretty flat. Um, skin lines. gonna follow the colors that I've already laid out I mean the um the dark to lights that I've already laid out so I kind of have it already planned if you will come over the side yeah, I'm gonna end up using a lot of this indigo because it's letting the color underneath show through which I don't i mean i don't hate it but it's definitely not the plan okay get some extra off my middle color definitely can see a consistency difference right away It's kind of wild because like when it dried, it dried way more green. Uh, than I wanted it to be because I've got a lot of blue. So this is closer. It's the same exact color though. But look how different it looks with the dark for, you know, versus how it looked. It looked almost cobalt like with the teal. The aquamarine and the uh, it's the same exact color. I did not swap this one out. But I mean, it's so crazy how the neighboring colors really make a difference into how uh, how these colors come off. Okay, get any extras off there onto my light color. Now this is super light blue. I'm not 100% sold on it. I might mix it with the medium just to... Eh, I'm not, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. It's definitely more consistent with the purple and the pink. As far as the color blend is concerned and you can see I have some of the medium color modeled into it definitely like it better than the green plus uh, my branch color is uh, going to have silver in it so the indigo and the blues I think will be more uh, more consistent with that kind of addition. I 
because it's like, I mean, look at all the colors that are happening to my brush. So it's very easy to model the colors together because they are literally still all like loaded into your brush. I got a bristle, but it won't work. So you can see there's like, it's picking up dark, medium, and light. I want it to be more light, so I'm gonna add more of the light color to it. Yeah, see that works. That's pretty much that of the painting process. I do you want to go over the dark because it's very like washed out? I'm just gonna get my one inch. What is happening here? What is that? It's like floating in my. So I couldn't get the hits with the softer brush that I can get with this brush. That's why I switch over. It's not a stiff, it's not considered a stiff brush, but it definitely has more, because uh, it's a flat brush, not a round brush, it definitely has more of a backbone to it than a soft round is going to have. As you work outwards, don't hit it as hard, and it'll model itself. It'll like blur the lines in between the colors. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay, you need to wash these suckers. Okay, all right. I'm going to just leave my soft brush, my soft round, to soak in there. Um, flat brush out. Clean that up. Okay. So now it's about to get crazy. Okay, so now. Originally I was going to use craft paint, but I think it's going to be too flat. I need it to uh, create peaks. So I'm actually going to grab some acrylic white. So this is just Dale, uh, Daler Rowney acrylic white. Do I have one that's open? Mm -hmm. I didn't want to open one if it says I already have one that's open. So, I think I have black open. Oh no, I got one. It's huge. It's like a ginormous thing of white acrylic. Hmm. I have a, I'm just gonna stick it in the corner here. I don't really have a good spot that doesn't have paint on it. I was a little too liberal with my my splooching on the palette. Come on. Yeah, that sounds disgusting. <laughs> a lot of squishing, squishing noises. Uh, but you can now I'll show you this consistency. So you saw the soft peaks of the folk art craft acrylic. This is like straight up acrylic. This is like if it dries, it will dry in that position like a cock. <laughs> so okay, so we're taking our three quarter inch flat, and I'm going to do white. I'm going to do stiff peaks of white uh, separating the colors. Hopefully it does, I didn't get too much modeling so I want it to stay white as possible. Uh, you may have to do a number of passes. 
but you want to build it up. I don't usually go over the side with the white. If I, um, you can, but usually because it's like, um, <coughs> it's a texture I'm creating. So I tend to keep texture on the front and, but I don't know, I'm looking at it thinking maybe it'd be good to bring it over the side. Might be okay. Uh, just to finish off the line consistently. So uh, I'm not gonna, you know, that's all it's gonna get. <laughs> I'm not gonna spend, you know, time doing that. Um, but uh, you can see there is definitely a. Pick it up here without getting texture happening. Okay, so unfortunately because I used artist acrylic, I'm probably going to have to stop at this point and let it dry overnight. And then come back to do the silvering because uh, there's no way this is going to dry it's it's not the it's not the same as craft paint like by the time i get to the next section blah blah, blah by the time i clean my brush it's not it's definitely more like a uh, you know it's a much different um i mean it's still gonna dry in a couple hours you know, it's not like oil paint that could take like eight months to set, you know, it's not like that, but, um, it's definitely going to need a little more time than the craft paint in order to dry. Um, so that is just like the modeling and I will come back tomorrow, um, probably during my lunch break. Um, I'll bring this with me and, or, hmm. Or before I before I head off to work, I will do the silver leaf to because I have silver accents all over the place. So um, I do want to do the white is still going to show because it's I have a lot most of my furniture is white washed. So um, but I do want to create um, I do want to leaf this with silver. So I am going to be using a liquid leaf of silver to uh, do dry brushing on the texture, but I am going to finish up using my what acrylics I did put on my palette. I'm not going to try and scoop that back in the tube. So I'm just going to keep building them up, building it up and uh, getting like these nice like textures and ridge lines and stuff. Uh, in the paint so that uh, the leaf has, the liquid leaf has something to grab onto. Um, so I'm just, but thanks so much for keeping me company. Um, I was trying to think like, what should I do? Because it's like, I don't want to like, it's hard with the resin. Like, the resin is good for, like, if I film something and put it on YouTube kind of thing. Because, like, because it takes, like, one, you know, it's like one sleep later, then your thing is done. But you can't, like, watch resin dry. Unless I did, like, a 24-hour stream where, like, you literally just sat here and watched resin set. <laughs> like, while I slept in the background, you know, it's like... <laughs> You know, I mean, it's like, mm, I don't think that's anyone that anyone wants that stream, you know. Um, but uh, so I'm just going to keep creating these stiff peaks with my brush. Um, just so it has this like kind of cool veining. Action. 
action happening. I like it. I like it. I think I'm going to stay there. Stop there because I don't want it to get too thick. Um, I'm just following up with Friday's project. And uh, I had forgotten I had gotten these. These are uh, dragonfly glazes here, here by Folk Art. And they are, it's a glaze uh, to go over acrylics and it has color shift mica in it. I don't know how sparkly are, they are. They would um, suggest that they're pretty sparkly uh, if the, you know, the packaging has anything to say with that. Um, and I also have my metallic silver uh, to go over the white. So that is what I'm working with right now. So I don't want any brush strokes happening. Just grab my, so I'm using a foam brush right here just for, just, you know, with the wooden handle kind of thing. And open, should open these. Because I think I'm just going to work directly on the canvas. So this one is a uh, red to violet to blue. So I was thinking I'll do the blue to green on here and the red to pink on here and the violet to blue on the purple. So I don't know if this needs to be shook. It doesn't say either way. It sounds like it needs shaking. I don't know. Maybe it has a stopper in it. It does. Okay, so when you take the plastic off, there is also a stopper that has to come out. And it's kind of a pain. Okay, it's stuck. It's like curiouser and curiouser. It's, it's, it's a messy opening. Not only is there a stopper, but there's also like plastic over the opening. And I guess you're meant to pierce it. I tried to use my fingernail and now I've got mica color shift glitter all over me. <laughs> so that's, that's magical. Um, all right, so I'm just going to go ahead and go to town and uh, see how, what this does. So I didn't want brush strokes in my, um, that's why I'm using the sponge. So we'll see how and if this does, I mean, it's obviously going to, going to make it shiny because it's gloss glaze. <clears throat> may, have, may have put on, oh my gosh, look at the sparkle. Holy cow. I was not expecting to see that kind of a, I don't know if you can. I don't know if it's picking it up, but dang, it's sparkly. I mean, it's obviously clear. It's obviously clear. Um, definitely used too much. <laughs> I will try and get some of this back into the container. Hopefully, let me grab the container. <clears throat> Okay, so maybe a quarter size. I, I used about a half, about a silver dollar size amount. I only need like a quarter sized amount for my for my piece. Good to know. Good to know. So even less for the pink because that's not as big. Okay. Just want to get the excess off. And I'm going to get rid of these lines if I can. So I'm just going to lightly pull across my piece to try and smooth out these lines of grace. Try to get this go here. Excess. Okay. okay, 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 looks good. 
All right, definitely don't need that much. A little bit. <laughs> it goes a long way. Good to know. Um, all right. Just grab my water over here, maybe. Uh, I don't know if you can hear, but that is why lunch break live stream didn't happen. Because we are experiencing crazy thunderstorms today. Insane. It's insane. <laughs> okay, this one I think I'm just going to try... Just pouring it like a quarter sized amount, maybe. It's gonna come out. It's very thick. Uh, I'm gonna try that to see how that is. Okay, my brush is still wet. So I'm gonna try and get it. As dry as possible. I just, at first, I was going to just go across it, like with each color, and not bother washing out my thing. But I, uh, now that I see how purpley purple the purple mica was, um, obviously that's going to screw, like, mess up my green. So I don't want to do that. Um, so I'm going to try bring this down. This is almost. Um, this is like a blue to green. Okay, definitely don't have, it's weird, that's weird. It did not do as much as I was hoping. <clears throat> like I wanna get a nice, nice coat. Oh, come on, come, come. Very sparkly, very sparkly. Figure out if that's a fuzz or if that's just a reflection. But uh, I had to kind of clear this off my workbench, so that's why I'm following up with this episode now instead of waiting until Friday because I'm going to be hosting something tomorrow night, so I need the space. <laughs> but it's very sparkly. I don't know if it's picking it up on the... Oh, there you go. <clears throat> you can see how much sparkle is in there. <clears throat> I don't recommend doing that. It's made a weird ghosty. <laughs> Just trying to get the very like this one is almost white like the other one was very clear just very clear and glossy this one almost has like a um like a white tint or something to it okay okay don't think i'm gonna put in water i'm just gonna try and eh, no it's not gonna come out water so I'm just going to do this little bit with the, uh, the pink one. So this is um, golden, gold to red to pink to violet color shift. So I can show you what it looks like. Um, you know, you take, you would take the plastic off this normally, to, like use the squeeze, but I found it easier just to open it. Oh, see, this one is completely different too. This one didn't have the, the, the first one I opened had a cork kind of stopper and a plastic thing over it. This one was just open. Who knows? Who knows? No, so much for consistency. <laughs> I mean, they're brand new. They're never, they're never opened, as you can see by the plastic. If 
but whatever. I don't work there. <laughs> So I bought these on Amazon. Um, I bought them during the pandemic, like during the whole lockdown thing, because I thought I was going to be more productive. <laughs> but I ended up working from home, so like, <clears throat> so I didn't get to do all the fun, you know, play things that I was I had in mind when I bought things during the uh, lockdown. So, I mean, work is good. <laughs> I actually have a lot of fun at work because it's a studio, so I get to be creative there just in less artsy crafty ways, more follow the follow the formula ways. Okay. Alright. Mm, I might just gonna grab my uh just to pull it just like pop it off the ground a little bit. Um, I'm not going to keep this, so check them out. Um, let me see if I have a better... Let's grab one of these. <clears throat> it's a little low. Uh, Hmm. We get nothing. We get nothing. It's better than nothing. <clears throat> There's a little too much give to my canvas to put a cup under it. Okay, so I just wanted to show you the uh, dry brushing of the liquid leaf. So this is just two ounce liquid leaf. Um, bottle. It's silver. <clears throat> well, it's actually called sterling. Um, a ball bearing in it. I didn't know how like the storm was going to move so I'm just trying to like get this stream in before like I have to stop again before the internet goes out again because <laughs> the internet went out everything went out the power went out everything so I'm hoping I can get this like project done live streamed kind of thing before anything more happens all right I'm gonna pull whatever excess silver off of my I'm just going to brush it on that kind of, to bring out the texture of the white. So it has like a little pop to it. I thought about doing, uh, like, silver is not the best color for this color combination, but I was picking colors that go well in my room, so... Which is kind of the what I used to do my, for my friends when I was in school, like grade school and high school. Uh, they would tell me their bedroom colors, and I would paint them something like this um, to coordinate with their rooms. So that was like that was like our our thing, or do like a smaller canvas for like party. But people have something, something, a little something special to take home. Um, it's also a great, uh, you know, painting thing to do with kids because it's, everything is non-toxic, acrylic. So I didn't really do a texture on this corner because this was kind of a hindsight thing. <clears throat> I'm just sort of hitting it with the silver paint and kind of rubbing it off so that it looks like it has a texture. So that is the 
see if I can bring you guys down. Hold on. Extra just little edges here. Brush noises. And just bring you down so you can see the canvas a little bit closer. And see if I can pick up any of the sparkles. So you can see the silver. Trust dry brush. Ooh, like the pink. Look at the sparkles in the pink. Look how pretty. And of course, the more uh, when this dries. The, oh, you can see some sparkle in the corner there. It'll have like the color shift uh, mica. Oh, you can, yeah, you can see like pops of color popping out. It's actually quite a bit in the purple. There's so much mica in the purple. I'm actually glad because there were parts in the purple that were kind of thin, like here, like in this area. That were a little thin because of the craft smart paint that we used instead of the folk art paint so i'm kind of glad that it kind of coated that and stuck to that still um yeah so when it's uh when it's all dry it'll be super super sparkly and ready for hanging but uh thanks so much for <laughs> tuning in between the crazy storms I'm having here. I'm actually going to post something on my Instagram, uh, possibly even YouTube, because I recorded some of the storm and it was crazy. The lightning was insane. It was so huge. And the thunderclaps were like shook everything. <laughs> um, but uh, And then just torrential downpour for hours. But I'm um, so glad I got this in before the power goes out again. <laughs> and it sounds like the storm is subsiding, so hopefully. So hopefully we'll have a quieter night. But thanks so much for tuning in, and I will see you guys on Friday? Wow, Friday for Lunch Break live stream, and then again for After Dark Art Friday night, where I will have a new project. So... I have a whole list of things I want to do, so I don't know exactly what I'm doing on Friday. <laughs> It'll be one of the things. But uh, thanks so much for tuning in, and I will see you then. Good night.